Today we're going to go over some disorders in floriculture. Floriculture is one of our CDEs, which is a career development event. And one of the sections of this event is to know disorders of plants. These are things that could happen in our greenhouse, that could happen in a crop, in a garden, different things that can affect the growth of our plants and how well they turn out and how well they look. So these are things we want to make sure that we know because it takes a lot of people looking for these disorders sometimes in order to see them and notice them and notice the signs before it gets so bad that we can't do anything about it. So we're going to go over some of these disorders so that we will know what to look for. All right. First up, we have aphids. Aphids are a big problem in a greenhouse. If you are growing peppers from seeds and in a greenhouse, more than likely, you will get aphids eventually. Aphids are chewing um, on plant leaves, and so they're very harmful if you, they get into your crops. And again, if you've got vegetables, you're going to have aphids. Um, they can be different colors, um, but mainly the main thing to notice is they are usually transparent. I'm sorry about that. They're usually transparent looking um, like the picture on the right. Um, they live in dense colonies, meaning there's if you've got one, you've got a lot of them. Um, if you're trying to go biological controls, ladybugs are a really good control. Um, so sometimes seeing a ladybug is a good thing because you know they're taking care of your aphid problems. Um, and then another is insecticides. So you can use just any of your common insecticides. Just check the label, see if it's for aphids. If it is and it's safe to use, you can use it, of course. All right, a fungus gnat. Um, one of the main reasons that you have fungus gnats is because you have fungus. And if you have fungus, it's because you're watering too much. Usually it's found because of a wet soil. They feed off of that fungus in the soil. And so one of the controls is to just avoid fungus. You avoid watering too much, which is a common problem in school greenhouses because we all want to water and make sure they're well taken care of. So watering too much can be just as big of a problem as not watering enough. And so one thing to watch for is these little tiny gnats. They look like mosquitoes without any um, stingers. Sorry, that keeps popping up. But they look like little tiny mosquitoes. They'll look like little dots flying around. And usually it's when you have that green scale coming over the top of your soil. Next up, you have a leaf miner, obviously, because it looks like as a larva, they make mines through the leaves. They make these little zigzag patterns, and that is because they are eating away at the inside of the leaf. They are making these little tunnels. Um, they can cause the leaf to actually dry out and die because they are eating the inside of the leaf um, from the inside out. Um, there's a lot of different kinds. Um, it's important to control them when they're young, so a foliar insecticide will work really well with leaf miners. A mealybug. Mealybugs are one of the easier ones to spot um, because they are um, they have cotton ball shaped bodies. They'll leave a powdery substance that's always usually white. Um, it's kind of important to be able to tell between the difference in a mealybug and powdery mildew. With mealybug, you'll see the little tiny bugs. Plants will stop growing. They'll reduce in leaf size. They'll be prone to rot. A lot of times we have these problems in succulents and cacti, um, like our Thanksgiving cactus, like our aloe, snake plants, different things like that. It's important to for almost all of these disorders to quarantine the affected plants. You don't want this to spread. You want to be able to control it, but you also want to make sure that you're protecting the rest of your crop. And so using insecticidal mealybugs works fine. Again, you want to check the label and make sure that that's correctly listed for that. And then you want to make sure you get those plants out of there until they're safe to bring back and introduce back into your greenhouse. Scale is, in fact, an insect. It looks like a little bump on the stem, which it basically is, because as a small insect, it attaches to the stem and it does not move. Um, it stays there, and it doesn't cause a whole lot of damage to the plant, except for aesthetically. Um, people don't want to buy plants that have these spots all over them. Um, one thing to make sure of is if you have a plant that has scale on it, it's only on one stem, usually you can break that stem off 
throw it outside again take it out of the greenhouse don't leave it in a trash can or anything in there um, or there is this special oil that you can apply and spray on to the leaf stems to get rid of scale um, but usually just breaking off the infested twigs and getting rid of them is the best way to go about that usually they affect trees shrubs that kind of thing and not necessarily your fleshy leaves plants a slug is a shell mollusk. Um, they chew irregular shaped holes in the leaves. So most of the time you will see the damage before you see the slug because they are night crawlers. They come out at night. And so um, a lot of times you'll notice the chewed out parts of a leaf in the morning, but you won't necessarily see the slug. One easy way to control um, a mollusk like this is easy, of course, using mollusk, but you can also um, dig out a little pit into your pot and you can put a plastic cup down in it and put water in it and the slug will roll right off into it um, when they're crawling around at nighttime. And so that is a very effective way to get rid of slugs. They're slow movers um, and they leave a mucus trail behind them. So a lot of times if you see that damage, you see the mucus trail, um, you can kind of set your slug trap and see if the slug is actually what is causing the problem. Spider mites are itty bitty mites. Usually you will see the damage well before you see the mite. They do make a web um, somewhat like a spider. It's actually not a arachnid. It is a mite. And so you would use miticide to control it. Um, that causes flecking, discoloration, the scarring and scorching of leaves. It can lead to plant death. So it's important to diagnose this problem early on in order to correct the problem. Powdery mildew is something that can be confused with my um, mealybugs, but powdery mildew looks actually more like mildew. It's grayish color. It's a fungus. Again, these fungus can be introduced from too much water on the plant and on the leaves and staying there. And so you want to make sure that you avoid um, overwatering. You can apply fungicide to get rid of powdery mildew. Um, keep it dry, as dry as possible. Keep that humidity down and that will help avoid all of your fungi. Thrips have a really long body. They are a sucking insect, so that means they withdraw the fluid from within the leaves, um, making them appear dry and wilted. Um, they can be silvery. They can be black. Again, usually you can see the damage before you see the actual insect. Um, Again, keep that insecticide sprayed on there. Check for the label. Make sure it says it's used for thrips. You don't want to spray it if you know it's not going to kill what you're intending to kill. Um, it's important to get rid of these because it can damage your plant pretty significantly. White flies are just like their names. They are a white fly. You can go along to the side of a pot and tap the side of the pot and you will see them begin to fly. Um, this is It's easier to check for the plants for this because they actually like to inhabit the underside of a leaf. So you can look, look one of the common pests of, or one of the common victims of po is poinsettias. Um, pretty much if you have a poinsettia in your greenhouse, you're probably going to get white flies. And so it's important to do that preventative insecticide. Um, prevention is key. You want to make sure if you get poinsettias, you want to go ahead and pre um, do preventative insecticide because more than likely you're going to get white flies um, in the future. They secrete a honeydew that attracts ants, so that's another problem, especially if you're in a greenhouse with students that are allergic to ants. You don't want to attract those ants. And so um, the same thing with aphids. Aphids can um, create a honeydew that attracts ants. And so these can be ways to remember. Um, if you see a lot of ants, that could be one thing to notice. Okay, what are they being attracted to? So that can help you diagnose a problem. And that is all our disorders for today. Um, we want to make sure that we keep an eye out for these different things in the greenhouse so that we can take care of them as quickly as possible.